Hi, my name is Yao Zhong Tu. I'm a high school physics teacher. Welcome to my lectures. We will start with a little bit of introduction material before we begin the real physics part. In this video, we will talk about standard units and unit or dimensional analysis. If I want to measure the width of this panel, I can use my hand, the width of my hand, and uh, I'll get about four times the width of my right hand. Or I can use a measuring tape. And this will give me about 14 and a half inches. Both measurements are meaningful. But of course, the width of my right hand is not generally recognized the unit. So to communicate my measurements more accurately with others, I do want to use well-defined units like inches, feet, kilometers, etc. In the AP Physics courses, we use these standard units. For length, we use little m for meters. For mass, we use kg for kilograms. For time, we use little s for seconds. Out of these three, kilogram is the only one with a prefix k kilo, meaning 10 to the third. This makes one kilogram a thousand grams. So sometimes the standard unit for mass gets mistaken as grams. Also, you probably use grams a lot in your chemistry class, so it can be confusing. Just try to remember that the standard unit for mass in this course is kilograms, not grams. Now, this does not mean that we don't use grams, centimeters, or hours as units in physics. It's just that they are not the standard units. Although this may seem weird now, but pretty soon you will learn the importance of this standard unit system. Before we go on, I want to tell you some of my habits. I write little v like this, big V like this. Because you will see that we use both capital V and lowercase v in physics equations, sometimes both in the same equation. I want to make them look very different so I don't confuse myself. I also write 5 seconds like this so I won't think it is 55 when I look at it later. Of course, I write stop like this because uh, I'm not going to think this S is a 5. I also write little u like this, big u like that. Little k, big k. Now I admit this pair is a little hard to tell apart, but I'll try. And certainly you do not have to write like I do, but you'll want to be able to distinguish these easily. Last on my agenda for this video is unit or dimensional analysis. You're probably familiar with these formulas. The area of a square with side L is L squared. The area of a triangle is one half height times space. Both of these have length times length, length times length, which gives you meter squared in standard unit, a unit for area. The volume of a rectangular prism is height times width times the depth. The volume of a circular cone is one-third height times pi r squared. One-third and pi do not have any units, so the unit comes from the height times radius squared. Length times length times length, which gives you meters cubed. In order to have volume, an object has to have some sort of width, some sort of height, and some sort of depth. Three dimensions, so the unit for volume would be length cubed. In standard units, it would be meters cubed. So suppose you remember that there is a formula for a sphere. 4 pi r squared, but you cannot remember what it is for. Then you can look at the unit. 4 pi has no unit. r squared 
is the part you get the unit from. Lens squared, meters squared, and that's for area. So this is probably some sort of area. In fact, this is the surface area of a sphere. So you can really get some good information from units and dimensional analysis. One more example. If you travel at 55 miles per hour, how many miles would you travel in two hours? Miles per hour, that is uh, miles per hour. You can see that if you multiply 55 miles divided by hours by two hours, the hours would cancel and you will get 110 miles. This concludes today's lesson. I hope you like it and will join me again.